Hiya, and welcome to Dupla Art, where I take the duplicates we find during our Giggles and Gala Mafres unboxing and art with them. Today's duplicate is Cleo from the Disney Dorables Multi Peak Series 1 Doors. And when you have a fish, you need a fish bowl. So I'm going to be making one out of UV resin. This project didn't turn out quite the way that I thought it would, and I learned quite a bit. So let me share my mistakes with you so that you don't make them yourself. It's all about science. So first to make the decorations for the tank, I used polymer clay. I had some extra green, red, and I do have gray granite. And I looked at reference photos of Cleo's bowl and she had a little coral and a little plant and a castle. I found these bug collector containers at the dollar store quite a while ago and had them in the drawer. And when we got Cleo, I was thinking she was the perfect size to go in there. That was my first mistake. I didn't stop to think of what the material was made of and what I was going to be putting in it. You'll see. So I used a wire to judge just how tall my plant needed to be. I put the polymer clay on an eye pin so that I would have a little bit of a base when I stood it up inside the tank later. And I just shaped out some leaves with my silicone tool. And for the coral, I pushed a small snake of clay through my pasta machine to flatten it out really well. And then I just folded it back and forth, back and forth, like an accordion, until I got it just the right size and smoothed up the edges. And I took more of that green and rolled out even thinner little blades of grass or seagrass to put around it. For the castle, I used the gray granite and rolled out more of a tube, a, a thicker snake, and cut it to put next to Cleo to make sure that I had enough room. And so I want to make the castle a little taller. I'm not going for a actual recreation, just an inspired by look. I rolled out a thinner snake of clay and made four little dots for turrets on top of the castle. I'll be adding that later. And then I used my tools to rough out more of a stone look. Again, not going for completely realistic with the castle because this was so small. I used my largest ball tool to push open the drawbridge area, if you will, the tunnel. I know there's a name for it, I can't think of it. The place that you walk in the castle, where Cleo sleeps in the movie, she's so cute. And then I used chalk pastels to deepen the shading along the mortar lines. I made a ring of translucent clay along the top and attached the turrets that way. And I used more of the chalk pastels to darken up the castle. I also used the chalk pastels to add depth to the plant and of course carefully picking it up and shading both sides. And I used a bit of white pastel along the top of the coral to lighten it up there. I even rolled out some stones and dusted them with pastels, just in case, but I didn't end up using them. And once I was happy with it all, I put it in the oven to bake, 275 for 20 minutes. 
While that was baking, I took the bug catcher and cleaned it very thoroughly with rubbing alcohol to make sure there was not going to be any dust in the container. Little did I know, that was the least of my worries, but you'll see in a bit. I used two different sizes of seed beads. I used the darkest navy that I had and put that in the bottom of the container and then dripped UV resin over the top. And I used a wooden skewer to stir things up and move things around to get all the bubbles out of the bottom. And this was just gonna give me a nice flat surface to work on rather than those bubble legs at the bottom of the container. And I used the UV torch to flash cure that. I do intend to set this entire thing out in the sun. This is just to quick set the layers. After baking, I noticed the chalk pastels were not dark enough in the mouth of the castle, so I cheated a bit and used a Sharpie. Don't do this. I really should get out of the habit of using a Sharpie. But I just darkened in the mouth and then I immediately put some UV resin to seal it so that when I did put it in the tank, the ink wouldn't run. I used my pliers to put an L in the bottom of the eye pin so that I could steady the plant in the bottom. However, I did go back and add a piece of painter's tape so that I could lean it to stay standing in the resin while it cured. I added lighter colored seed beads over the top and dripped the, the resin over that and again with the wooden skewers to make sure that everything was where I wanted it to be. And then I positioned the castle and used the skewer to move it into place and then I positioned the coral on the other side. I wasn't putting Cleo in the tank yet, but I used her as reference to make sure the castle was enough out of the way so that once I sealed it in resin, I would still be able to put Cleo where I wanted her. And then I added a light blue resin in drops and used the skewer to swirl it into the clear to kind of make it look like water lines. And again, cured it with the flashlight, torch, whatever it's called. <laughs> It was time to add Cleo to the tank. I added clear resin to make sure that it would tuck into all the little holes to tr try to reduce any air bubbles I was gonna get. I wasn't overly worried with air bubbles in this project because I think it lends to the look of the tank, but some of them you don't want. Once I was happy with where she was, I went ahead and dripped more clear resin over the top. So here's where I should have really noticed the mistake that I had made in choosing the container that I did. I am used to working with cold process epoxy, which is a ratio of epoxy. You mix one to one, two to one, three to one, depending on your product, and you let it alone to dry for 24 hours. That is a cold process epoxy. UV resin has an exothermic property. Here we go, science, which means that it heats itself as it's drying. If you've ever held on to UV thing under a light and felt that heat come off it, you know what I'm talking about. Not only is this container plastic, but the shape of it lends to a very different heating pattern because what is going on that I did not notice and should have is that each time that I cured a layer, it heated the plastic container. Thus it warped it along the way and I ended up with it separating in different areas and where the resin dripped from top layers into the bottom, it created a really bad crackle pattern under the plastic. I used a straw to blow away the air bubbles that had come to the surface. I hadn't noticed at this point that the sides were separating. And I set that entire thing out in the sun to cure. That's when I noticed the problem, a big problem, an ugly problem. The crackle was very noticeable. I made every attempt to go in and push the edges out to try and get some resin up underneath it to fill where the separation was and actually broke my drill bit, my small drill bit, in the resin trying to get it away from the edge to be able to salvage it. Had it occurred in the back of the tank, I wouldn't have cared. This piece is for me. I'm not selling this. So I wouldn't have cared if the air bubble had been in the back. This, however, was right on her face, and it was really bothering me. You could see the lines. I even tried putting a piece of ribbon around the top edge so that it would disguise where my drill bit was still embedded in the resin from trying to pull all that out, and I didn't like it. So it sat around for a few days, and I stared at it angrily. But I can't throw things like this away. I try to use everything I make. I could have left it at that and put this up as a fail, but I couldn't let it go. 
So after a couple of days of staring at it, I think in a fit of late night, no sugar, too much coffee fit, I peeled it out of its container, which the top part just broke and shattered into a couple of different pieces. But the bottom half slipped right off, which was nice. And then it took quite a few hours of sanding with several different grains of sandpaper to get the outside smooths so where you couldn't see those transition marks. I coated the whole thing in a coat of the clear UV resin and sat that out in the sun. I didn't film any of it because I hadn't planned on doing it. And now it looks very pretty. I like it. I see the mistakes in it. But again, that was where I didn't pay attention to my materials. And I didn't think through the science. Hmm, go figure. But like I said, I should not have put an exothermic chemical in a plastic container shaped thinly to where the heat was going to have to rise from the bottom to the top, which meant it was going to warp along the way. Brilliant. Next time, think before you do things, okay? Again, you got to know your materials to do this stuff, which is fine. That's why you experiment. But I'll know for the next time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And please hit that like button. You can also hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to be updated of my latest videos. If you'd like to see more of my art and what I'm currently working on, please feel free to follow me on Instagram at kwin. You can also visit my website at www.kwin.com to see some more art and where you can catch me across the web. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.